The chapter is uh, inherited change and uh, we're going to study meiosis. Uh, meiosis is a type of cell division and this results in the formation of haploid cells. These haploid cells are called gametes. and meiosis only takes place in the reproductive organs. The reproductive organs in humans are the ovaries in the female and the testes in the male. So nowhere else in the body does meiosis take place expect, except in the ovaries and the testes in humans. In plants, of course, it takes place in the anthers. Anthers, as you know, are the male part. And then there's this filament, which is the stem through which the xylem and the phloem pass and which provides nutrients to the anthers. This as a whole is called the stamen. And this is the male part. So the pollen grains which develop inside this would be by meiosis. Pollen grains would have been formed so that is why inside the anthers we say meiosis is going to take place because the pollen grains are the male gametes. Now a normal human cell has 46 chromosomes. First of all DNA replication has to take place and they become 92 chromatids. And then 46, 46, but please remember this is not 2n. In this case it was 2n but in this case this is n and I'll tell you why. And then another division takes place and 23 chromosomes, a cell is formed with 23 chromosomes. So now we have four cells with 23 chromosomes. One, two, three and four. So therefore we're going to, that's why I label it, this is going to be meiosis one, this one, and this is going to be, if I label this here, this is going to be meiosis 2. Please pause this video and try to understand the concept which I am trying to make. So meiosis is going to result in four cells with half the number of chromosomes. Now when we talk of half the number of chromosomes, say we say there is a cell and 2n is equal to 6. Now by 6 I mean not 6 individually different chromosomes but 3 pairs. Now how am I showing you the 3 pairs? I'm showing you with different colors. So there's a green pair, there's a black pair and there's a blue pair. So the 6 are complete. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, five and six. But when by meiosis a cell is going to be formed then it is only going to have one of each pair. So one green, one black and one blue. And this would be the nucleus of this cell. So please understand, I could have also drawn, this would be an uh, O-level MCQ, is that the nucleus will contain, this would also be 3. But why would this be wrong? Because the blue are a pair. While in this, what we have to understand is, if I have said 3 pairs, I mean a black pair and a green pair and a blue pair. So I mean, I'm just showing it to you by different colors, but of course, and the chromosomes are not colored but I just want to get the concept clear. So this would be a wrong drawing, but this would be the correct drawing because out of the three pairs, there's one of each pair. 
So, if I say 2n is equal to 8, it means 4 pairs. If I say 2n is equal to 10, it means 5 pairs. But I say humans have 2n is equal to 46. So, this means there are 23 pairs of chromosomes. In uh, cell division, cell division is of two types, meiosis and mitosis. Mitosis takes place everywhere in the body and it is required for growth basically. But I will not talk about this uh, chapter or this uh, part of the syllabus because it is part of the AS level syllabus. In meiosis we have again the four types the four sorry phases not types the first phase is prophase then metaphase then anaphase and then telophase so prophase we say prominent metaphase we say middle anaphase we say apart and telophase we say two and this is just to make you remember the different phases and the different parts of the, it's both of course, is common to mitosis and meiosis. As we're going to have meiosis 1 and meiosis 2, so we're going to discuss this in a little more detail. We're going to first part talk about meiosis 1 and so we talk about prophase 1. Now prophase 1 is the most important stage of meiosis because here a very important phenomena takes place which is called crossing over. So, as I just said, P for prophase, P for prominent. Now, what do I mean by prominent? I mean is that when you look at a cell in prophase 1, the nuclear membrane has started to disintegrate. Please remember the nuclear membrane has to reform. So the phospholipid bilayer just breaks up into phosphates and you know the fatty acid tails and the glycerol and it disperses into the cytoplasm. But then you're going to reform it again. So you need those molecules again. Now we're going to use the 2n is equal to 6 example. And we're going to assume that 2n is equal to 6 means 3 pairs. Of course that is what it means. But here I'm going to show you by 3 different colors. So we have a red color, a green pair, and a blue pair. And this would be the cell with which we are starting the story. So we have the cell with 2n is equal to 6. Now before any nuclear division has to start. Please remember mitosis and meiosis is nuclear division. So in S phase of interphase, copies have been made. So we have four red. Similarly, we have four green. And we have four blue. So what has happened is that the two chromosomes, like for instance, if I drew two blue, these are called a pair of chromosomes. Now they have become sister chromatids. So a copy has been added to this and a copy has been added to this and they are joined at the centromere. So now when we see the cell in prophase 1, we actually see them coming together in pairs. And the blue four come together. That is why this is called a tetrad. The word tetra means four. Similarly, the four reds will have come together. And the four greens will have come together. They come together. And the word that we, another word that we use is bivalence. So prophase 1, actually now you can see the chromosomes as they have shortened and condensed. So they have become prominent. Next is metaphase 1. In metaphase 1, now we've got to understand, we use the word middle, M for metaphase, M for middle. 
but it's actually the word is the equator. So they align at the equator. Now the three pairs have aligned at the equator and one of each pair, you know, sort of the blue one with its copy is going to be pulled to the poles. This is called the poles, not the ends. Please do not use the word end. So they're going to be in the next phase, which is anaphase one. Anna phase one, they're going to go apart. I use the word alag in Urdu. So they're going to move apart and the blue is going to go this side. So we've got the blue, one blue and its copy. Similarly, the other blue and its copy will go this side. The green and its copy are going to go that side. And the red and its scopy. So we've got now what we need to understand why are we going to call this N? So all these are going to move to the poles of the cell. So anaphase 1. In telophase 1 as you can see now there is one cell but it has two nucleuses and each nucleus has one red in its copy, a green in its copy, and the blue in its copy. So it's actually three chromosomes. But a copy is still attached to it. So this is actually now N. Why is it N? Because what did I say? I said in the original cell, there were two blues and there were two greens. And red, green, and blue. Now in this one, if you look at this one, is just one of this blue with its copy. So it's actually just one blue, one green, and one red. Which one of course we don't know. So this is now N or it is haploid. After telophase 1, now two cells will be formed. So this is going to divide into, this is going to get into one cell and this is going to form another cell. And we're going to have two cells with half the number of chromosomes, which is haploid. But as you can see, there are still six chromatids in each. So, but still this is because there are only three and a copy of it. So this will be called a haploid nucleus. So two cells have been formed now. And we say cytokinesis has taken place, which is not part of nuclear division because prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase are part of the nuclear division. Now in meiosis 2, we're going to have all of these steps repeated again. So in prophase 2, now we have two cells and again they become prominent. In metaphase, now they align at the equator but at right angles. In the previous ones, we had it like this. Now they are going to be aligned at right angles to each other, to the previous metaphase. So now we have them aligning at the equator in metaphase 2. In anaphase 2, then they again separate and we call them apart. In telophase 2, now we have one cell having two nucleuses. And now these are... Now they were haploid before also, but now because now they don't have any chromatid, now they are three chromosomes. And finally, this is going to divide into one, two. So we have two cells here. This will divide. Similarly, this will divide into two cells. And we have four cells, all containing haploid nucleuses, which is N. We call this N because now it's only three nucleuses, three, sorry, three chromosomes in each cell and this is completes uh, meiosis 1 and 2. The next and the last thing to remember is that crossing over which we are going to study in the next video takes place in prophase 1 and that is very important which results in variation. And you also need to remember that independent assortment takes place in metaphase 1. This of course will also be dealt in the next video which will complete uh, the topic of uh, meiosis. Thank you.